A man in his mid-forties dressed in blue overalls walks into a house armed with a gun. He moves quietly, not wanting to draw attention to himself, he searches for his target. He continues his search in one of the bedrooms in the house. Suddenly, an old woman shows up and asks, who are you? Where is Michael? He points his gun to her and shoots. Boom. Surprisingly, she doesn't stay down but her bones start to crack and she rises up transformed into this mysterious and ugly looking creature, a vampire. She attacks the man and displays strength and fighting skills you would never expect from a regular grandma. But of course, she is no regular being. The man manages to kill her. He displayed a high level of training and the expertise almost like he kills vampires for a living. Another vampire tries to attack him from behind, but falls into the invisible string trap he had set up. He takes out a tool and removes their teeth, specifically their fangs and exclaims, money. He gets into his van and drives away. That man's name is Bud. Bud is a father to Paige. He and his wife, Joss are separated. He always shows up late to pick his daughter from school, and he always has an excuse as to why he will be unable to take her to school. Presently, Bud's wife has given him an ultimatum that if he doesn't get his daughter's tuition fees of $5,000 in a week, they would be moving to Florida to live with Joss' parents. Bud doesn't want to lose his daughter so he promises to have the money by Monday, which is six days from now. Bud takes the teeth he got from his last job and goes to cash it out at a rundown electronics store which is managed by Eddie. Bud is really just a front for Troy, a vampire teeth collector to run his business. Bud expects to get a huge sum of money for the goods he has turned in but is disappointed when he is told he would only get $800. He starts to argue and Troy tells him to go sell it at the Union, to which Bud disagrees. He offers some of his tools for sale but Troy takes advantage of his desperation to buy at the cheapest price. He even asks for Bud's Jordans which he had on. Bud leaves feeling frustrated and unable to sell anything. Audrey, a relative of the old woman that Bud killed, goes over to her house only to find her dead. She immediately orders for her security guy to find who carried out the operation. Bud is in trouble. Bud meets up with an old friend, Big J, and asks for help to get into the Union. He explains his predicament to him and Big J agrees to help him. Bud worked with the Union in the past but he violated too many protocols and so he was kicked out. The Union is like a legal setting where you could kill vampires and get paid for doing that. Also, there are rules to be followed and if you break the rules, you get kicked out. Bud and Big John meet up with Ralph, the manager of the Union and they were able to reach a compromise which involved Bud being on probation for one week. He had to go on his assignments with a Union rep accompanying him for supervision, and he had to work the day shift. Now, we all know that vampires operate in the night, so Bud was gonna have to work extra hard to make that money. Ralph doesn't really want Bud working for the Union, so he tells the Union rep assigned to him, Seth, to report any single mistake he makes while on the field. Seth and Bud do not hit it off on the first field operation. Their principles differ. Bud is a get the job done by all means kind of guy and Mark is a follow the rules kind of guy. Mark tells him about the different kinds of vampires. There are Southern, Eastern, Spider, Uber and Juvenile. They are largely solitary but when they get together, there is a hierarchy. They organize according to their age. The sunlight is the only thing they are scared of. Bud is on the field to kill some juveniles. Seth advises that he come back when they are older so their teeth have more value. Bud tells him that he needs the cash now. He also tells him to stay in the truck. He trails a juvenile from an animal shelter and is led to an old bowling alley filled with vampires. Seth receives a call from Ralph asking for updates on their mission. He tells Ralph that he was asked to stay in the truck and Ralph flips. He orders him to go inside and record any violations that Bud makes. He goes into the bowling alley and meets Bud fighting head-on with one of the vampires. He is terrified but manages to pass Bud's shotgun to him. When the fight is over, Bud laughs at Seth because he not only kept vomiting repeatedly, he also peed on himself. Bud reassured him that he did well and that everyone wets themselves the first time but he still didn't let him ride in the truck. He had Seth sit in the back and hang his legs to air dry so he doesn't mess up his seats with his pee. When he drops Seth off, he gives him a special body wash that will get off the scent of the vampires they killed so that other vampires cannot sniff them out. Bud gives him several tips on what to do and what not to do. Bud enters into his truck and sees the notepad where Seth had been writing down his violations. In the meantime, Audrey is still tracking Bud down and she is able to trace his scent to Troy, the black market teeth collector. She threatens him and demands he spill information about Bud's whereabouts. She gives him a short lecture on how vampires cannot live without their fangs and cannot regenerate their fangs if lost. She gave him two doors, one, join her in service and live, two, do not live. He chose door number two. Bud gets home and as he is walking to his apartment, he bumps into his new neighbor who introduces herself as Heather. They exchange courtesies and he welcomes her into the building. The next day, Bud picks up Seth on their way to work. He confronted him about the notepad containing the violations. Seth's response was that he was following the union rules and Bud told him it was Seeger, that is, Ralph who wanted him gone and that's who he was really obeying. 
Bud asked Seth for a couple of days off the book to just gather the money he needed and Seth agreed. They went over to Troy's place to get ammunition but met a bloody scene. Seth insisted they report it to the Union but Bud was focused on leaving in search of some extra money. Seth kept insisting and so, Bud tells him that if he, Bud doesn't get money from the Union by Monday he's going to lose his family. With that, Seth apologized and agreed to cooperate. On his way to his apartment that night, Bud overheard a weird conversation from his neighbor's house. He started to suspect that something was happening. The next day, Bud and Seth were outside of a house which Big J had given Bud a tip on, when they saw the Nazarian brothers pull up to their side. The Nazarian brothers are big-time vampire hunters who cleared out all of Glendale, and were headed west hunting vampires. They exchanged banter and agreed to work together with Bud on the house he was about to raid instead of taking the job from him. Seth was also going into the house. Bud gave him a weapon and advised him on how to attack. They all enter into the house and killed about four vampires. They started inspecting to ensure there were no more vampires hiding out. Then, they discovered that the house was a hive. There were vampires coming in from every angle, through the walls and even the roof attacking them. A vampire attacked Seth and he was unable to take the safety off his gun. He peed himself again and had to fight for his life. Thankfully, Bud came to his rescue. When they are done fighting, Seth notices something very strange. The different vampire species were cohabiting with each other. Southerns, Eastern, Uber dot 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 and they would never live together under normal circumstances. They brush this observation off and divide their spoils. Seth and Bud engage in a cheerful conversation on their way back. Bud tells Seth that he has what it takes to be on the field rather than just being an accountant in the union. Bud goes over to his wife's to pick up Paige for her friend's birthday, and Joss tells him he's late again. He tries to dodge going for the birthday party but Joss wasn't having any of it. She shrugged off his comments as jokes. At the birthday party, Bud receives a phone call from Audrey. She tells him that his name was the last thing on Troy's lips when he died. She also tells him that she's going to take everything away from him, and goes on to say, enjoy the party. After the phone call, a car rolled by with two men in it, one of which Bud recognized as the man in his neighbor's apartment, the day he overheard the weird conversation. He immediately grabs Paige from the party and tells her they gotta go. He tucks her into the car seat and adjusts the seatbelt, places her headphones on and she starts playing a game. He tells her that if she feels some swerving, that's just his special driving. Audrey has sent several men to harm him. There is an entire car chase going on and he has to get away from them to protect his daughter and himself. Bud calls Joss and asks her to pack a bag. He tells her he doesn't have time to explain. He needs her to be ready to run. Paige finished her game and takes her headphones off. She assists her father in avoiding the bad guys. They are able to evade them and they get home safely. Bud opens the door and finds that Audrey has captured Joss in the living room. Some men quickly snatch Paige away from him and he is hit from the back. He comes clean before Joss and tells her he is actually not a pool cleaner, but a vampire hunter. Audrey has bitten Seth and he is lying unconscious turning into a vampire. She takes Paige and Joss away with intentions of turning Paige into a vampire. The men with Audrey throw Bud down and he hits his head. Her plan was for Seth to drink his blood when he transforms into a vampire. Luckily, Bud wakes up around the time Seth also wakes up. He is able to break the news to Seth that he has been turned into a vampire. And he apologized to him. He asked Seth how he feels and Seth said he felt horrified to be a vampire, but kind of amazing. Like his blood was on fire. Seth said he felt hungry and rushed towards Bud in an attempt to drink his blood. Bud sliced his head off and a few moments later, Seth was alive again. He picked up his head and connected it back to the socket. Seth was able to keep his bloodthirst under control, and they drove back to Bud's apartment to get some information they would need to defeat Audrey. He went to confront Heather about her identity. She admitted to being a vampire but also insisted that she did it because Audrey is her maker, apparently. The old woman that Bud killed at the beginning was actually Audrey's daughter who she had turned into a vampire in order for her to remain alive. Heather told Bud that she wanted to help him take down Audrey, Seth also. Together, they went to a vampire underground camp where Audrey would most likely have taken Paige and Joss, and started taking down the vampires they met on their way. Big J also showed up, Seth texted him. Seth and Heather were on vampire duties above the tunnels, while Big J and Bud entered into the tunnels to find Paige and Joss. Big J got bitten by a vampire in there. He eventually closed the gate in between the inner tunnels where Joss and Paige were and where the attacking vampires were, after sending Bud on his way. Inside, Seth and Heather came to his rescue against Audrey's main security guy. Now, he had to find Audrey. He found her and they engaged in combat. Audrey was incredibly fast and accurate with her moves, but a hunter is still a hunter. Bud was able to set up the old invisible metal string trick and Audrey ran right through it, slicing off her head. The battle was won, Ralph showed with his union team and was shouting about Bud's bad work ethics. Seth sided with Bud and they found loopholes in some of the rules. Bud made up with Joss and Paige, and they started planning oh how to be a better family together. Thank you for watching, see you later.